Today I'm here to do my top 10 albums of 2013. And uh, just as a disclaimer, I've split this up into two different categories. Another video is going to be my top 10 Seattle albums of 2013 because there was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to put them all into 10 when Seattle was just its own category because there were so many great records that came out of Seattle this year that I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Here is a list of my top 10 favorite albums of 2013. Since the marsh, death and marsh. I will forever love Frightened Rabbit. I can thank my friend Susie for making me listen to them and their new record is fabulous and Scott's songwriting is just beautiful on this record and just will always love Frank and Rabbit, okay? Always love them. Always, always. Always. This record is all kinds of sexy that I can't even describe it. Like, it's so great. When I saw James Blake play last month, I was just overwhelmed with the bass and the sexualness of his voice and everything was beautiful. And that record is just fabulous. Like, Retrograde is just it makes you feel things, okay? It makes you feel things. And it doesn't hurt that RZA is on a song too, which is great. Cool it was very hard for me to place this on my list. I was like, I really love the record, but I, there were only some songs on it I was like, meh, and some songs I was like, yes, hallelujah. So it's definitely in my top 10 because it's fucking great and it's Arcade Fire and they're always great. Um, but that's why it's a little bit lower on my top 10 rather than like towards the top. If you haven't listened to it, do it. And Arcade Fire with James Murphy making music is just <sighs> something I never knew that I wanted and now I know that I wanted it all along. I'd heard all this buzz about this girl group from LA called Haim and I was like, what? Okay, whatever. Um, when I finally sat down and I listened to it and I was like, okay, this is awesome. And I love their vocal harmonies and I love that it's like this really kind of like 70s, 80s rock throwback. It's, it's really catchy and I love it. Like the record is great. I really am sad I missed them when they came to Numos back in like October. I was like, damn it! And this was a band I actually saw last year open for Menomina at the Showbox. They are a Australian band and I love them. Like, I really want them to come back to Seattle because they were a totally unexpected love for me. Their record Homo Sapien has been spinning on my iTunes all year and it's just super just cohesive and and synthy and wonderful. Oh, like it's so good. Like Shiver, the the vocal just effects on it is just not too much, but just the right amount of effects, and I love it. And their music videos are really freaking cool too. In the I will always be a local natives fangirl since I saw them at Sasquatch 2010. Yes, back when they were first like getting big and. Gorilla Manor was everywhere. Oh, Hummingbird is so good. And I actually went out and like purchased it. You know you like a record when you actually go spend money on it. <sighs> Their songs are so much better live than they are on record. I mean, they're really fucking great on the record, but like seeing them live is just another experience altogether. Hummingbird is so good. But should I be? And this record actually got uh, like Rolling Stones number one spot for albums of the year, which I don't say it would like be the best record of the year. I really love Modern Vampires of the City. Unbelievers is so catchy and weird because like the song itself is about the saddest and most depressing thing. It's super catchy and I'm like, I don't know what I should be feeling while I'm listening to this, but seeing them at Sasquatch and then at Deck the Hall Ball last week, I love them. It's definitely like still Vampire Weekend, but moving in a great progression like from the last record. <laughs> When this record came out this year, I'd been waiting for so long for new Phoenix stuff because Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix came out in like 2009 and I'm like, it's been four years, come on guys, please, 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 please. And I got to see them twice this year and I got to meet them again. Tomas is so lovely and charming. I have a picture with him back there. You can see it, it's that one right there. This new record is so 
good and I want to buy it like a physical record once I actually get a record player to like start playing it and stuff. Entertainment is like <laughs> the happiest song of the year. Entertainment! Yeah, I'm gonna stop now. It's good. It's great. Getting down to the wire here. It's a Heim throwback. Feels like a distant memory. I already told you guys last week about how much I fucking love that record. It's so sexy and perfect and I can't believe that Alex Turner's only 27. I'm like, wait, he's how old? That's doable. Like, that's realistic. Arabella, why'd you only call me when you're high? Are you mine? Do I want to know? It's one for the road. Like, it's just where they need to be right now in their career. Like, it's, it's the perfect place for them to be as a band right now. Oh my god. Oh my god, like, <laughs> I want them to come back already, like, so I could just see them for play, play an hour plus. I just want to photograph Alex Turner's face up close. Oof. And number one, my favorite album of the year, by far, came as a total and complete surprise to me. I had no idea that I was gonna love it this much, and I'm really glad that I ended up going and seeing them play at Music Fest Northwest. I've put Typhoon songs in a lot of my videos recently because pretty much their whole album is released under a Creative Commons license on SoundCloud. This record is my record of the year. Like, it is so cohesive and beautiful as an entire record. It's one you have to listen to all the way through because the songs fit so well together and usually I like bands that are pretty like minimal and like simple where there's not like a bunch of crazy instruments. I mean sometimes I like a bunch of crazy instruments but there's literally like 10 people in this band. They have two full-on drummers and a bunch of string instruments and horns and piano and two guitarists and they fill up the entire stage with just the amount of people but when you see them play music live it's they fill the entire room with this gorgeous instrumental music that is just something to experience and something to see you kind of have to just like hear it like the way that they mix it on the record is so clever too because it's like you're hearing it all live because they have like one drummer in one side and then the other drummer in the other and it's just it's like a binaural experience. I know I've turned a bunch of you guys onto Typhoon because I put their music in my videos and I'm really happy about that because they're far underrated like in terms of just like music in general. I just, I just love that record so much and I'm so glad that I kind of stumbled upon seeing them at the old church during Music Fest because otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. I wouldn't have bought the record right then and there if I hadn't seen them play it live. God. So, today's song of the day, I'm actually going to have it be The Wire by Haim because that music video is just about the cutest thing I've ever seen. Because it has Yorma Taconi from The Lonely Island in it and I love Yorma so much. So definitely go check out that video and I have made a playlist of some of my favorite songs from these records this year there. Actually no, I'll just put it right here because why not? I can put annotations to YouTube playlists. Right here, click, click on the mirror, the pictures. Yeah, so those are my favorite albums of the year. Not including Seattle ones, because I'll make another one later about Seattle stuff. This one will be considerably later in the month, because I still haven't decided the order that they're gonna be in, because it's really, really hard. Putting this list together was a lot easier, because I'm like, oh, these people aren't my friends. But like, the Seattle one's like, oh, these people are my friends. How do I, how do I distinguish it? It's really hard. Go check out those records if you haven't already and check out the playlist and I will see you guys on Saturday. Bye.